All right, you guys, it's time for another episode of Southern Searcher Excavation. We're here at the famous Kinston Dump. I'm going to try a new spot today. Nobody's been digging around this section at all. Well, there's a little bit of a low spot somebody might have dug 30 or 40 years ago. And here's some things apparently somebody left behind. There's an embossed milk with the top broken off, which uh, might be worth bringing home and putting a new top on it. It's not a very valuable milk, but any slug plated milk that says the name of a North Carolina town is worth something. So I'll put that over there for now. And the ground is nice and tight over here. And crunchy. So yeah, I think I'm going to test out this spot today. Who knows, it might be the older part. I rarely dig when it's this hot outside. It's 85 today. I happen to be here for other purposes in this town and I hate to drive a hundred miles just to do one thing. So I still got four hours of light. So hopefully I can find a hundred dollars worth of bottles in that time. It's looking like it's uh, exclusively 40s. Sloan's liniment, screw top, maybe worth two dollars to somebody. Okay, I'm not recording at all because so many of them are junkers, uh, but I just found this nice blue jar. Sorry the lighting's so bad because of all the weird shadows. It's not a 13. So it's only worth five dollars. Okay, I just knocked this one out of the wall. I think I see embossing on it. It's just one of those generic ones. Well, it's better than that one. What's that one I see all the time? I don't know, but Edgewood. Second least desirable out of all the milk bottles from here because not having the city name on a bottle is going to cut the value down. But um, it's really rather scarce to me because I think this is only the second one I've ever found. Okay, we got this. Uh, I guess it's some kind of a... I don't know. I just know it's a cosmetic of some sort. Got the label still on it. I can't quite read it, but maybe you can through the lens because I would need my glasses on to read that small writing. I don't know if it's even worth bringing home. If it said something on it like a local North Carolina name, then it would be. Okay, we got what looks like it's going to be some kind of a White House, vinegar, cruet. It is the pour spout, so that's a lot nicer than the ugly screw top variety. There's multiple designs that could be on these, and uh, this one, I don't know, it's not the rarest one, I can say that, but it could be worth eight or 10 or $12 maybe. Okay, I see what looks to be a quart milk bottle showing up. And see the slug plate right there. So hopefully the top's not missing or anything like that. I almost think I should go back and get my light. This is really kind of distracting to have to see all these shadows all over it. Okay, it's intact, or full if you're from Canada. Okay, pretty nice. Kinston Dairy, McDaniels, Kinston NC, no lip chips. And I'm not seeing any cracks or anything else wrong with it, so that is a pretty good one right there. Probably worth uh, $35. 
Okay, it's only been about two minutes or less since I just found that milk and I see another one showing up. And I feel embossing on it as well. This must be my lucky day. Oh no, it's just the hilltop. That's the one I was thinking about earlier. Just plain hilltop. But no, I'm not going to complain. As long as it's intact and there's no chips or cracks, it's still got to be worth at least $10. I left my bucket, so I like to always have a bucket of water. Now I don't have one and it's the hottest day that I'm going to dig all year. So I'm hoping these bottles aren't going to bruise up on me. And we got a slick 8 ounce. And uh, super common for the late 20s, but okay, we got another bottle. Could be a milk, but I think it's gonna be something else because the bottom edge is just not quite as rounded as you would expect for a milk. So I'm thinking it's a jar of some sort. Yeah, it's a clear jar, but at least it's not the ugly square type. It is an Atlas Strong Seal. Pretty common, but still. Uh, I think it's worth a few dollars anyway, especially if I put a lid on it. It is the bigger size, and uh, like I said, the square ones are really undesirable. Okay, do you know what that is? Just by the shape and size, I can tell what it is. It's one of these dip the comb in the bottle. A pretty neat looking bottle for the late 30s. I found a number of these already in this dump. But they do definitely sell for five or six dollars, so that's a pretty nice one. And just before that I found I guess this would be considered a hair tonic, but it has these interesting patterns all over it. Except on this side, of course. But still, I don't think I've ever found one quite like it, so I'll probably get two and a half dollars for it at least. Okay, let's have a look at the last few that came out. Pretty common, but somebody might want it as a bud vase. And then we got what reminds me of the Winslow Soothing Syrup, but a little different and slick. Then we got this odd shaped bottle but it's actually embossed. I think I know what it is. Yep it's a McCormick. Even though it's a later one it's uh, fairly scarce. I think this is only the second one I've ever found in my whole life. All right it looks like another milk bottle. I don't see the embossing this time but hopefully it's facing the other direction. Mm, what? A slick? Oh well. Can't win them all. It's an older looking one though. So it's still worth five dollars. Okay, we got one of these. Some people think it's a whiskey flask. These actually sell quite well. I don't give them much respect because I'm smart and I know these are really extract bottles. But people really like them and every time I put one out for three or four dollars they seem to sell pretty quick. But yeah, just let that be a lesson to you. These are not whiskey flasks. They are just an extract bottle. Okay, I haven't been finding very many of these lately and uh, this is the larger size. So it looks like it's going to clean up rather nice and probably sell for at least $3.50. Okay, is that a soda bottle finally? Oh my god, it not only is, but it's a peanut Pepsi. Wow. No town name on the bottom, but some people actually get like $65 for these. And this is only the third one I've ever found in all my born days. Oh, damn it. 
it's cracked. And it could be a fresh crack too, because that's where it was sticking out. It's from the top. So did I just hit that with the shovel? And of course the crack is on the front. So that's definitely going to hurt the value quite a bit. Shoot, I'll be lucky to get 25 for it now. Alright, we got some kind of uh, mason jar showing up. Well, more of a food product that takes a mason jar lid, which still is worth a few dollars. Because people like those. If I can get it without breaking it. Wow, it's actually a rather unique one. It's got a little bit more interesting design to it than most of these. So once I put a lid on that and clean it up, I think I'll get five for it. Well, since I got the camera turned on, I might as well keep going. Okay, there's a mason jar. And you can see it's a blue one. But it's got a big crack in it. I'm using a different scratcher than I usually use and I yanked a little too hard and it came apart on me. So that's not good. I'll just have to hope it's I can hammer it back in and make it through the rest of the day. If not, I'll be leaving early maybe. Okay, possibly I have pint milk. It is. And it's embossed. Oh my god. Wow. It's the GC White from LaGrange with the star on it. I have the other two sizes and now I got a complete set. I just hope I can get it home without it uh, getting bruises on it. Well, it is nice and shady, but it's not helping because I'm still sweating pretty bad. High humidity and high heat. I've never become acclimated to this kind of environment. But anyway, here's another mason jar. No embossing on it, but it's an odd small. I guess you would call it a half pint. Those are fairly rare. So, uh, so I found this. Used to find these a long time ago, back when I first started. Never knew what they were. I always thought it was some kind of a snuff bottle that you stick your nostril up to that and inhale. But I really don't know. And then I found this. A slicker, but it is a cork top and it's cobalt blue, so probably can get two and a half dollars for that. Okay, it is really getting dark in here. But I just went and unloaded all those bottles and got me another bag and I got the light and newspapers to wrap them in. Some water to make the newspaper wet. So we're going to start round two now. I'm going to tunnel it about 14 inches in every direction. Okay, I just pulled out a little Bo Peep. I haven't found one of these for a while. It's pretty nice. It might be worth six or seven dollars after I clean it up. Okay, we got a couple showing up. Could this be an early ACL? No, it's just a beer. What's this? Mm -hmm. Just a slick food product of some sort. But what about this? Ah, it's another one of those little flasks that is really an extract. But this one is a screw top, so not quite as nice as the cork top. Okay, I didn't catch that one on film, but it's a surprising one. It's um, 
in a weird screw top, but it takes a glass lid. Hopefully I'll be able to find the lid. It says Laura Lard on the bottom. A uh, big tobacco company from a hundred years ago. So that's older than I expected. And um, dang, it's got a crack in it, but still, it's gotta be worth something. Got some kind of a vinegar looking bottle. Okay, it's just another one of these. Same design, I think. Nice pour spout. And for those of you who don't know, it does say White House Vinegar on the bottom. And just before that, I found this McCormick's. And it has part of the label still on it. And a slick pharmacy of an older looking style. Okay, look what I just found. A uranium glass lid and it's not chipped or cracked either so hopefully I'll be able to match this up with something someday. I should have got this one on film coming out. I saw this on the bottom but I couldn't even tell it was cobalt blue because it was so dark in here. But I have never found one of these before. At least not in the big size. So that is a fairly scarce one there. Probably worth about seven or eight dollars because uh, I really don't think I've ever found one like it. I think they made them in green and possibly melt glass, but that's the big cobalt one and it does have that nice design on the bottom. And here's one with a distinctive shape. It's the bare aspirin and it's still full. Yuck. I don't think I want to eat any of those. Too bad it doesn't have that nice Bayer cross embossed in a circle on the front because those are actually worth quite a bit. But this one is going to stay right here for the ants to eat all those pills. Okay, I just yanked onto something and all this stuff came falling down. So we got a little emerald green bottle. Those are always nice. They actually sell for a couple dollars. Then we got another one of these cork top Mrs. Winslow's with paper label perhaps. And a late cork top generic pharmacy bottle. All sellable items. What else have we got in here? A little cork top amber medicine. It's at least $1.50. And what is this? Okay, we got one of these Glovers. Haven't found one of these in a while either. Glovers Imperial Mange Medicine. No, it doesn't actually say mange on this one. That would be for the older ones. So... It's a screw top, but it is still worth four and a half dollars. Alright, I think we have the log cabin syrup showing up here. It's got that distinctive megaphone shape. And I find these here all the time. Yeah, there it is. I don't think I've ever sold one, but I get the feeling they should sell for six or seven dollars. And we couldn't leave without finding one of these. All the late 30s and early 40s dumps are going to have these. It's a beauty, but it's very common. But still, at least five dollars. It is the big size, it's about six inches. Okay, here's another bottle that we couldn't leave without finding one of. A classic whiskey of this unique shape. It's kind of a nice Art Deco bottle, but I don't know. People just don't buy this stuff. Okay, there's a scarce one. No, it's not a Vicks Vapor Rub. It's actually an Ingram's 
shaving cream. Quite rare. This is maybe the third one I've found in 33 years. Ooh, I found a genie bottle. It's, uh, I think it's got some interesting designs right here. Is that lions? I think it says lions and it has two lions facing each other. But in any case, it is a rather odd bottle, so somebody will definitely give me $5 for it sooner or later. Okay, it's been a good hour since the last milk bottle, but we finally have another one showing up. And it is the Hedgewood. Well, I guess I won't complain about it. It might be worth $14 or $15. Doesn't seem to have any chips or cracks, but who knows what will happen during the trip home. And just two minutes later, we have another milk bottle showing up. Well, maybe only half of one. Still, it's a good idea to save these tops because you can splice them back onto some rare milk bottles and they'll still be presentable. Okay, we got a third of these uh, White House bottles. So, if they weren't common before, they're common now. Oh man. You know what that is? I haven't seen what it says yet, but it's some kind of a dairy juicer bottle. And yeah, I know the top's broken off, but these are pretty neat. It says Kinston on it. I've never seen one before. Wade's Dairy Grade A Kinston NC yeah, I've heard of the regular milk bottles with that name on them, but not the juice bottles. So that's one of the reasons to save the tops. So I'm definitely bringing this one home because even in this condition, it does have a little bit of a crack right there, but still could be one of only two or three known. All right, we have yet another milk bottle. And it looks to be intact. And it is slug plated. And it looks like a pretty nice one. What is it? Kinston Dairy McDaniel. Yeah, it's a beautiful half pint. Looks to be in good shape. So that's nice. I contemplate sometimes maybe I should collect. Only the half pint slug plated milks of North Carolina. Because, you know, the bigger sizes just take up too much room. All right, what do we got this time? Something's embossed on it. Lighting's so terrible no matter where I'm at. But it is a Dr. Miles Laboratories Incorporated. It's a corker, but it's a very late corker from about 1933. Okay, we got what looks to be an Art Deco whiskey. Just the same as that other one. Okay, that was a short dig. Possibly four hours, but I think we found pretty close to $200 worth of stuff. Of course, most of it's a bunch of low-end stuff that's slow to sell, but we do have, what, six embossed milks? That's pretty incredible for such a short dig. All right, I'm back home. I got the bottles washed up, so let's have a look at the better ones. 
We got this nice quart. It's got some wear on it, but no actual damage. It's a nice slug plated bottle. So, then we got a half pint from the Edgewood, Edgewood Dairy. Too bad it doesn't actually say Kinston on it, but it is in mint condition, so I'm thinking it's worth about $17. Then we have the Kinston Dairy McDaniels in the half pint. It's got some wear on it as well. But no chips or cracks, so I'm going to say it's worth about $23. Then we have this juice bottle that's badly damaged, and it does have cracks running down it as well, so could saw it off right there and make a drinking glass out of it. Or cut it there and hope to find a top half one day and splice them together. But in any case, I'm sure it's worth at least $5, even in that condition. And then we got the pint size Edgewood. Gonna need a little bit of muriatic acid treatment. Yeah, especially right there. I keep a bucket of 50-50 mix of water and muriatic acid for such a case. I've used it about a thousand times and it works really well. Might take a good 36 hours to get all that to dissolve though. But this bottle I'm going to put a value of $17 on. Oh my god, I don't believe this. Uh, this bottle, I washed it last night and I just sat here and developed two bruises. So that totally ruins this bottle. So the only thing I can do with it is to spray paint it. And so, you know, it doesn't look too bad backlit. But not everybody has a backlighting situation in their collection. But really, I don't see how those could have developed. This one definitely looks like it has some rust in the bruise. That's really surprising. Oh well. I'm just going to say, in this condition, right this minute, it's worth... I'm sure I could still get $10 for it. Alright, then we have the Hilltop. Another that doesn't actually have the city name, but it's definitely from Kinston. It does have a bit of a bruise on the back. Quite hard to notice it, though. So, otherwise, it looks really nice. I'm going to put a value of about $12.50 on it. Okay, last but certainly not least is this beautiful milk bottle from the small town of LaGrange and of course anything with a star on it makes me happy to own it. I don't know what it is about these star bottles, but they certainly are eye-catching and this one is only slightly damaged down at the heel, hard to notice. So that completes my set, I think. I haven't seen the other two for about a year. But I'm going to put a value of about $48 on that one. And then, of course, we have three of these, so I'm not going to make too much of a big deal about those. So all those milks and that Pepsi are definitely worth over $100. And then we have all this kind of stuff as well as this entire box of stuff that needs to be washed still. So I think we found right at the $200 worth in 3 hours and 45 minutes of digging. Okay, so what I've decided to do with this bottle that has multiple bruises on it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to tape off with Panner's Tape the Pepsi Cola rectangular section and all the rest of it's going to be spray painted silver. Well, let's see how it turns out. Alright, there it is. I just started to peel off the tape. So now for the reveal.
take it in the sunlight and see it better. Hmm, so what do you think? Kind of interesting.